guys, so this is my second time trying to film this video because the first time I only got like a sentence out, I got like this far in the video, and then I got the hiccups. And I have no idea where they came from. It was just like, all of a sudden I was hiccuping in my video. So, I got rid of them, I went downstairs, I got a bottle of water, and I drank upside down, which is the only way I have ever found to get rid of hiccups in myself. So, I got rid of it after maybe 10 sips of upside down water, and then on the 10th sip, it went up my nose. So, I've just had a little bit of an experience. I felt like I was drowning for a second there. It was interesting. So anyway, today's video I'm going to do a Glitterature on MAC, which is another young adult dystopian themed book like my last few Glitteratures. Are you seeing a pattern here? And I actually opened up a Goodreads account because everyone was like, I want to keep track of your books. It's like Facebook for book readers. You can rate books that you've read and then recommend books and review books and all sorts of stuff on there. And I actually rated 100 books the day I opened my account. I just like went a little crazy. And my future book, the book that I am having released on September 4th, which I haven't actually really announced on my channel. I know Blair did like a big announcement video. Blair and I are releasing a book. It's called Beneath the Glitter. It's a fiction novel loosely based on our lives. And anyway, the point of bringing it up is to tell you that Beneath the Glitter is already on there and someone rated it one star and it's not even out yet. Like what? You haven't even read it. You haven't even given it a chance, girlfriend. Okay, so Matched. Matched is, a, it's very similar in theory to Delirium, but very different in the way it's written. So if you watched my last literature on Delirium, then you know that it's based on a world where they believe love is evil and um, needs to be squashed from their society. So they immune, they give people vaccines. Well, it's not a vaccine. They like surgically remove the ability to love from people. This one is similar in the sense that it's a dystopian themed book surrounding love, but very different at the same time. In this book, when you reach a certain age, you go to a matching ceremony where the government matches you with the person that you are going to marry. And the way it's written leads you to believe that you get matched with your true love. Everyone's happy with their matches. Like the government has this really scientific way of like calculating all your brain waves and then matching you to the one person in the entire country that you like match the best with, if that makes sense. So it's very scientific, but it works in the book. People are happy with their matches. It's a way for society to create the most happy environments because you get to choose whether you want to be matched. You don't have to be. You can be a single and not get married, but then you're not allowed to have kids. If you want to go the route of having a family and having kids, then you have to be matched and you have to marry your match. But the good thing is, like I said, most people, if not all people, are actually very happy with their match and they believe it's love and they get together and they have the amount of kids that the government says you can have and everyone's equal and everyone lives in very identical houses and it's just a very strict world, but it seems relatively happy. Society seems to be pretty stable and pretty happy until enter Cassia, the lead girl of this book. Everything gets a little bit mixed up when her matching ceremony doesn't go exactly to plan. The entire storyline of this book surrounds the fact that Cassia actually gets matched to two people. She's like the only person in the history of this society. There's a glitch and she gets matched to two people, Xander and Kai, and she kind of has to work through on her own what to do about it. So for the first time in this girl's life, she has to question the society and question, she knows which guy is her true match, so which guy she's supposed to be with according to society, but then the what if questions start getting to her. What if the other guy is her one true love? What if that's actually her soulmate and some sort of fate has intervened and matched her to him as well and she has to decide her own passion or the society. Like it just, she gets very confused and she has to work through it and that's what the book is about. It's mainly about her trying to decide which guy she wants to be with and of course Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just like a romantic, but I knew who she was gonna pick in the end. But this book, unlike Delirium, does not have a tragic ending. It doesn't have the happiest ending, but it's setting it up for the sequel, which I already own. It's named Crossed, and I believe the third book is already out as well, or it's 
about to be released. I saw it on Goodreads. I don't know. There's some third book, I think. But I'm definitely going to read the second book. I am very excited to read the second book. There's a lot of corrupt government stuff going on behind the scenes as well that she's kind of figuring out as she's trying to figure out which guy she wants to be with. So it's not just her trying to figure out which guy she wants to be with. It's a little bit less Twilight than that. It has other government conspiracy stuff as well. She finds out that there used to be a lot more freedom in the sense that you could write poetry and songs and music and that's not allowed in this society. They have gone through, the government has gone through and picks 100 songs, 100 poems, 100 pieces of art and destroyed everything else. So physically destroyed every other piece of evidence of the written work of humans, the painted arts, anything that's not in their hundred because it's just a very strict and actually more of a corrupt government than you would think early on in the book when everything's very like happy and flowers everywhere and stuff you realize that it's a little bit more there's more going on to this story that i'm interested to find out in the second book because it doesn't really talk about all of it in this book i keep looking down at it because it's just it's so cute i don't really know like what's on the cover I guess she's like in a bubble, which she's in a bubble it's called her society. I really enjoyed this book. I would say that I didn't like it as I was reading it as much as Delirium. Delirium had a way of completely captivating me where I felt like I was in the story, feeling the emotions that the characters were feeling and going through. This one was more of me looking in, me on the other side of the bubble, not necessarily the girl in the bubble, whereas with Delirium I felt like I was the character. But at the same time Delirium had a really terrible, awful ending and so this one I was very relieved that the ending was something that I could handle and understand and look forward to the sequel because I also have the sequel for Delirium and I don't know if I'm going to read it yet, so I'm definitely going to read this sequel first. I'm very curious to see what happens in the second book and if she gets what she wants. And I hope she does because I relate to Cassia more than I did in Delirium. I feel like I understand her thought processes and the way she works through emotions a little bit better than I did with Delirium. Delirium, I know the whole book's about being frightened of love and stuff, but she was just such a skeptical person. She was such like... A skeptic I don't know she was a hater about love and it just frustrated me I know she warms up to it but it just kind of annoyed me at the beginning whereas Cassia she actually like thinks about things and tries to work through things and she tries to follow a quote that her grandfather tells her before he passes away and it just kind of is this like underlying emotion that she's kind of riding throughout the entire book this quote and going back to it and kind of understanding it more as she finds out more about the society so definitely recommend it it's another great dystopian themed book if you have been liking the ones i've been recommending lately this one is really good it doesn't have as tragic of an ending as delirium not quite as enticing as divergent i love that one so much but they're all great and if you've read some of them and you want to find another one this is definitely one that is worth the read so that is my glitterature on matched and i'll see you guys later bye